Well, g'day, g'day, and welcome back again to Jiao Ching. Yes, we're back in Jiao Ching. Uh, we have one more Yun Fu video that I have to finish editing, but we're just about done with them, and we can get back to uh, back to creating content. So uh, today you find us. We are back in uh, this new tourist street here in uh, here in Jiao Ching. I'll give you a look down the road. But we're not actually going to focus on the tourist street today. I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, something I saw on Facebook today. So I was uh, just scrolling through my feed and somebody had posted something about... Uh, something... Oh, turn this tracking thing off here. Hold on one second. Right, so someone had... Uh, posted some sort of meme or something about cashless society and how terrible it is. So I thought we'd talk a little bit about that here um, because here in China, this is largely a cashless society now. So we thought we'd talk a little bit about how it works, uh, what the effects are and uh, yeah, how it affects society. So, first of all, is China a cashless society? No. Oh, just before we go on, let's look up out of us these girls here in these wonderful costumes, looking absolutely spectacular. Uh, I saw them just down the road. They were out taking photos and stuff. Um, so, right, back to our topic at hand. We will turn the camera around. If we see something interesting, we'll spin the camera around and give you a look. But yeah, is China a cashless society? Sort of yes and no. Uh, so cash is very easily available here if you want it. Um, you can go to the bank, get cash out of the bank anytime you want. Uh, it's not an issue. Um, but nobody does anymore. It's uh, just about everybody I know. I'm just trying to think of anybody I know who does not use either WeChat or Alipay to pay for absolutely everything that they they use in their lives from day to day. Um, I can't think of anybody. So a good example about, I don't know, maybe five years ago, I had to buy something off Taobao and I hadn't linked my WeChat to my bank yet. And uh, you know, I was still very skeptical. Uh, back in Australia before coming to China, I used cash everywhere. I didn't even use my FPOS card if, if it wasn't essential. Uh, I would go to the bank, get cash, go back to the shop, spend my money. Um, whereas here, yeah, so uh, I had to buy something on Taobao. So I used to get one of our teachers, I would send him the link to what I wanted to buy, he would buy it for me, and then I'd go and give him the money. <laughs> and I bought something one day and it was like, uh, it was around 100 RMB. And so I took, took 100 RMB up to him, up to his office, gave him the money, and he sort of looked at it for a minute and I was sort of going, why are you so fascinated with this? It's just money. And uh, he turned to me and says, you know, I haven't seen one of these for probably two years. I said, what? What do you mean? Because, uh, you know, he spends a lot of money. He said, well, nobody uses cash anymore. And it was at that, that moment, I think, I decided, right, I've got to try this because you know, for, for Frankel to be so surprised at what was going, uh, at seeing cash, just struck something within me. So he sat down with me, helped me set up my WeChat, got my WeChat connected to the, my bank account and stuff. And that's it. I've not carried cash since. I think maybe for a year, I kept a couple of hundred RMB in my, in my wallet just in case. And now I haven't pulled my wallet out of my bag. It's still in my bag over my shoulder here. 
but I haven't pulled my wallet out of my bag for probably four years unless it's to uh, pull out my bus ticket, bus pass. You know, we have a bus pass with scan, but even that I'm going to look at very soon. Once I've finished up the money I've got sort of put onto that, I'm going to uh, hook that up to to my WeChat as well. So even that will be disappearing very, very soon. So yeah, cash is largely done and dusted here in China. It's still available. Um, now, can it work in Western countries, in places, well, Australia, America, um, maybe Britain, I don't know much about other countries, but probably Australia I know best and America is sort of hear the news a lot more than other places. So they're the two main places I would focus. And can it work in those places? And the answer to that, I, I think it can, but I think there's an issue with governance. So there's a couple of things about Chinese society that make it much more feasible here than other places. So number one is the very, very strong community attitudes here uh, towards helping your community. So if we go back to Yunfu, the guy who owns that, uh, uh, what was it called? The Zenture Food Company has built this massive, massive facility in Yunfu. He could go somewhere else, I'm sure he could go somewhere else where it would be cheaper, it would be more efficient, more economical. And he doesn't because it's about helping your community. And people still have very, very strong feelings towards that here. So uh, even big companies here still put a lot of money back into, into the communities that support them. And they support each other. So they have that attitude and there is also the, uh, <laughs> okay, we're going to just try and cross the road here. We're going to walk back up the street. I want to duck back down towards the old wall. Uh, we also have here the um, regulations, which the government imposes, you know, they're very strict on if you do things wrong financially, you're going to be in a world of trouble. So uh, they actually have very, very strong regulation about money matters, you know, the banking system and stuff. Whereas uh, Australia, I don't think they, I don't know that the politicians are strong-willed enough to stand up against the, the lobbyists and big business. And America, well, they've just legalized the bribery of it over there. You know, the, these big lobby groups giving millions and millions of dollars to the politicians not to do anything. So I don't know that the sort of system that we have here in China could stand up to, to use in these Western countries. Um, so, yeah, I'd love to see it work. I'd love to see a system like we have here in China adopted in Australia. You know, bring in this bloody WeChat Pay. It is absolutely fantastic. Um, another concern that somebody commented underneath this post about being in Denmark, which is, you know, 50k away from my hometown, small town um, and they had a power outage and so without cash they couldn't pay for anything well here in china same thing the uh use wechat pay or alipay basically you don't need power you're not using one of those fpos machines that sit on the desk the vendor the seller the shop owner shopkeeper uh can basically pull out his phone pull up his QR code on his phone and you scan it with your phone and as simple as that, you've paid the guy. 
So even if the power goes out, as long as your phone's got some charge, and if your phone hasn't got charge, everybody here carries a battery pack for their phone. So, you know, phones going dead is not really a thing here either. It doesn't happen. So, yeah, they're sort of the... Uh, two of the big concerns that came up was one, what happens if the... Uh, if the companies decide to do the dirty, which, you know, a lot of Western companies, I wouldn't be surprised about that at happening at all. And uh, so, yeah, strong regulation. You need strong regulation for, for it to be able to work and you have to be able to trust your government to do the right thing. Uh, here's this old building that we, uh, we saw in an earlier video, but it was, it was nighttime. So hopefully this here is going to be uh, refurbished. It looks like they are doing it. They've got it all fenced off down here at the bottom. It, uh, it's another of these situations where everything's written in Chinese and I can't actually read what it says, but they have got a park out here. We do have a couple of, a couple of busts up here of some characters. So yeah, the other thing with uh, WeChat Pay, the power thing, if you lose power, you can't do anything. Well, that's sort of alleviated with the way that people use their mobile phones here um, and then the idea of could it work in somewhere like Australia well <laughs> that comes down to comes down to trust really um, you have to trust the companies in charge to do the right thing and people here uh, because of the cultural sort of thing of looking after your community and also the government regulation, people do trust the companies here. The companies do the dirty, they're gone, <laughs> no question. So, uh, yeah, it works very, very well here. Could it work in Australia? It'd take time. You know, they'd, the government would have to put in the regulations and they'd have to be strong regulations to stop businesses doing the dirty. And, uh, and the companies would have to build that trust. And I think in Australia, given the scandals we've had over the years, I think building that trust would be very, very hard. Look at these lanterns up here, don't they look fantastic? So, uh, yeah, I, I don't know that it would be an easy sell in Australia, <laughs> uh, but yes, it could work and it does work very well. Like I say, I mean, they sort of might call it a cashless society, but it's not really. Uh, it's cashless in practice, but cash is still easily available everywhere you go. Uh, so if we look down here, um, Turn this camera around. So we have people out on the street with stalls. These guys don't carry cash. It's all QR codes to pay for whatever you're purchasing. All the shops that you see here, very few of these shops would carry cash. Um, so up the road here, uh, there's a food shop which is owned by, well, operated by the brother of one of our teachers in our school actually a couple of teachers in our school they're uh, married so it's the wife's brother owns this shop or runs this shop I think I think Frankel and Kathy put in some money to help him get started so they've probably got a share in it as well but he doesn't have a cash register he doesn't have any sort of till if uh, somebody pays with cash it sort of just gets put in his pocket because he doesn't have anywhere else to put the money because Nobody uses it. I actually asked Kathy, I came down here about a week ago and Kathy was in there helping out. And I asked Kathy, how, how often do you actually receive cash? And they've been open now for what, a month and a half, two months? Never had a cash payment. <laughs> so people here use it, they trust it, it works very, very well. Is it open for 
for people doing the dirty? Yes, definitely. But they will get caught. It will not work for them very well. So, um, yeah, if anyone has questions about how this sort of thing works here in China, feel free to uh, feel free to hit us up in the comment section and uh, hit your questions. I'd love to hear what your opinions are. Um, yeah, like I say, I, I was very skeptical when I first got here and I am totally on board now with the whole the whole cashless thing. Like I say, I don't carry cash at all anymore. Uh, it's simply not needed. So, so yeah, that's what's going on here. Um, having seen that post this morning, I sort of I felt compelled to uh, to sort of talk about it a little bit. Uh, there's probably a lot of detail that I'm missing. I would love to. Uh, I love these big blow up panda bears and things up on the walls here. I would love to hear your opinions and what, what are your fears about uh, a cashless society? Because I would love to, uh, if we can help alleviate some of those fears, I would love to uh, do exactly that. I'm gonna cross the road here as we finish up. We're actually gonna walk back down towards the old wall up here. Yeah, I mean, if you have genuine fears about this sort of thing, which, like I say, I did when I first got here, no way. There was no way I was putting all my money through my phone and righty ra. And the other thing that uh, everybody using WeChat and stuff has done has largely alleviated street crime. Uh, when when I was coming here, I was told, you know, watch out for pickpockets. There's pickpockets everywhere, which apparently there was. And I got here and a lot of times, so on the uh, city buses was one of the places that, now uh, look at these sculptures you can paint up here. Just plaster things you can buy, the kids can paint them up. So one of the... So yes, pickpockets were, were a big problem here, especially on the buses. And every time I'd go on the city bus, I'd be sort of looking out for pickpockets. Where are the pickpockets? And uh, never saw them. And I was going, well, you know, I was told this happened and it's simply not happening. So I actually sat down with Frankel one day and I said, you know, What's with these stories? You know, I've heard all these stories from different people about pickpockets here and street theft and that sort of thing. And yet I never see it. I said, well, well, what's going on? Does it happen or not? And he said, well, yeah, it used to be, a, used to be a, quite a big issue. But uh, with the advent, and this is another reason why I moved to WeChat Pay and stuff. He said, with the advent of WeChat Pay, Alipay, all that stuff, it has, hello, it has largely moved, oh, you know, it's just gone away. Everybody now has their, their money through their phone. Everybody has either facial recognition technology or thumbprint, fingerprint scanning to access the phone. <coughs> so, there's nothing left for people to steal. I mean, they can steal your phone, but they can't access anything in it. It's all very, very secure. Um, took me a little while to be totally comfortable with all the security stuff on board, you know, going, oh, can it be hacked? Can it be whatever? And no, it can't. It just, it's very, very secure. I've never heard of anybody losing their money through WeChat, through Alipay or any of the various others that might be in use. Never heard of it. Never heard of hacking and stuff. They are very secure. So, so yeah, all that street crime stuff has just disappeared. It just doesn't happen anymore. And that, the fact that it's not so easy just to pinch cash off anybody anymore is a big part of it. 
Also, the implications of what happens if you get caught doing that sort of thing. Uh, you know, justice is justice is pretty firm here, from what I understand. I've heard a couple of stories of people who maybe got pretty hard done by, but if you do the wrong thing, you do the wrong thing. That's another subject we'll maybe make a video about again in the future. But, uh, so yeah, cashless society, I, first of all, I don't believe a cash, a truly cashless society is anywhere, anywhere near happening. So it's not something, you know, the people in Australia who are commenting on this post, really, there's nothing for you to worry about. I don't see a cashless society ever becoming a reality. Yes, you can choose to be cashless if you wish, but cash is always going to be available in the in the uh, short to medium term anyway, maybe in a hundred years, they'll figure out a way and get people to trust it. But I don't know. <laughs> I can't imagine a time when cash is not available. I think the system here is very good. You know, most people don't use cash, but cash is still available. It's not like they've done away with cash. So while you could call China a cashless society, in practice, in reality, cash is still easily available. I can go to the bank anytime I want. In fact, we've got a ATM in our school with my, you know, linked to my bank. So I don't even have to leave our school to be able to access cash. So yeah, it works well. I would be an advocate for it. I am an advocate for it here in China because they have the regulations. I don't know that I would, I, I don't know that I could see Australia going that way to the extent things have here in China anytime soon. I don't think the Australian community uh, have enough trust and faith in either the politicians or the businesses. So yeah, so like I said earlier, if you have questions, comments, if you want to know more about this sort of thing here in China. Hit us up in the comments section, let us know. And uh, yeah, we'll answer any questions. It is, a, it is a really interesting subject. And it's, it was very interesting coming here, you know, being a person who used pretty much exclusively cash in Australia, coming here and totally reversing my views on the, on the matter. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing how much I've changed, you know, how much my views have changed. I'm pretty amazed at the whole thing. So yeah, questions, comments, hit us up in the comment section. If you have uh, anything you'd like to learn about life here in China, any subject, let us know. I'll uh, endeavor to make whatever videos you guys request. Go and do some research and find some information for you. Um, yeah, like, share. If you've enjoyed this, share with your friends who would like to know more. Subscribe to the channel to see what else we've got coming up. Like I say, we do have one more video coming up from Yun Fu, which will probably go up in the next day or two. Had a little bit of an issue. We lost one video from the sort of selection I was putting together. Uh, which is rather a crucial one for the video. It's the only video that's failed. I don't know if I forgot to just press record on my camera, but we're trying to uh, get some footage from other photographers in Yun Fu to slide in and, yeah, hopefully we can uh, put something together for you and finish this last one. Otherwise, we'll go back to Yun Fu next year, record the same, same festival again. Um, what else have we got coming up? So next weekend, we're actually off to... Guangzhou, we're going to go and have a look at a Gaelic football competition, which is happening there. There's, I think, eight or nine teams coming to play in Guangzhou. So we're going off, we're going to meet this guy I've mentioned before, the uh, guy who's running AFL clubs here in Guangzhou. Um, and we also have Tuesday, I'm hoping to head out to Surhui, which is sort of the, I think it's a... No, no, 
trying to re get my head around the map, maybe to the west of Duan Zhou, to the west of Ding Hu. Uh, we're heading off to a big jade market, which we're going to go and film in and uh, bring you that in the next week or so. So, yeah, get yourself subscribed to see all this stuff that's upcoming. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care of yourselves. Uh, and we will see you all in the next one. Cheers.